Hey everyone, it's Brooke, and this is my third February book haul because it was my birthday month, and I got a lot of free money, gift money. Uh, yeah, so this is the third part, and it is going to include the comics I got in and around my birthday, also including my landfall freight box, which came today, the day I'm filming this, which is Saturday, the 27th. Okay, so in my landfall freight box. The theme was girl gamers, which I was a little nervous about because I'm not a girl gamer, but Landfall Freight is, they're just such a great curated box that I loved everything I got in it. The first thing I got was this single issue of Tomb Raider. Um, it is by Dark Horse, published by Dark Horse, and of course Tomb Raider, everyone knows, but it is written by... Mariko Tamaki, who you may see reoccur in this haul. Anyway, so that actually has me really excited because I love Mariko Tamaki. The other comic that came in the Landfall Freight box was this. It is called Chain Mail Bikini. It is the anthology of women gamers, and it is it is literally an anthology of like little black and white short story comics by different people and it's all centered around girl gamers and I am actually super super excited to read this and I didn't think that whatever they put in this box would be something I was interested in but it just looks like a lot of fun and even though I'm not a girl gamer I am interested in um you know, the culture and the different cultures that, you know, women enter that are generally male heavy, you know, kind of considered a guy thing. Um, I like reading about the female spaces within those communities and how important they are and how beloved they are. So I think this is going to be a great way to explore the community without actually having to be a part of the community. Yes. And then I ordered for my birthday the... First Trade of Injection. This is written by Warren Ellis, drawn by Declan Shalvey, and colored by Jordi Belair. It is a really weird sci-fi kind of story. It says, once upon a time, there were five crazy people and they poisoned the 21st century. Now they have to deal with the corrosion to try to save us all from a world beginning becoming too weird to support human life. So... That sounds really good. It's Declan Shelby art. I don't know if you're familiar, but um, I really like Declan Shelby. And I like Warren Ellis. And they've been kind of a comic duo for quite some time. And Warren Ellis is, is generally known for being a writer that you aren't going to necessarily understand everything from the get-go. But if you stick with it and work for it, it's, it's worth the weights or the work <laughs> or whatever. Um, so I'm excited to get into this and see how weird it is because I've heard it's really weird. One of the things, one of the comics, one of the graphic novels, this is a graphic novel, I was really excited about and was absolutely going to be on my birthday book haul was Long Walk to Valhalla by Adam Smith and Matthew Fox. This is published by um, Archaea, which is Boom Studios imprint. This is a beautiful hardcover. So that's why I put it off because it's not cheap. This, you can't really see, but there's some like detail on the cover. It's just really pretty. Um, and the art inside by is all like blue toned. Kind of reminds me of this um, one summer. But I really like the art. Rory of Arkansas, you're going to die today. There are many things that Rory would like to forget about his childhood growing up in rural Arkansas. Sometimes he'd even like to forget about Joe, his mentally challenged older brother, both his closest friend and biggest problem. But when a young girl named Sylvia shows up, claiming to be a Valkyrie sent by the Norse god Odin to deliver Rory to Valhalla, he will have to face the past he's tried to lock away. So that sounds amazing and I think this might, I want it to be one of my favorite things that I read this year. So there's a lot of expectation. Then I picked up the third volume of a comic that I 
read the first two volumes of last year and then sort of just got distracted and that is Gail Simone's Batgirl run. This is again the third volume. This is the Death of the Family tie-in. It was in a big event taking place across the Bat Family. So I have the Batman Death in the Family volume and I have read it. So I might take that back out and reread it alongside this. But you know it's Batgirl and it's a Joker story. So there's a lot of history between Joker and Barbara if you know anything about it. And I really love the arts in this run of Batgirl, like, a lot. Uh, the art is by Daniel Simpiri. Simpiri? Not quite sure. Uh, I really, Barbara Gordon's one of my favorite comics characters, and Gail Simone is a fantastic writer. You might see her again, like, immediately. So, speaking of Gail Simone, I picked up Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman. This is something that's originally published as a digital comics series. It's like, it's kind of like an anthology of Wonder Woman stories. They're little short stories that are told and drawn by different writers and creators. This collection includes a story by Gail Simone. So, as you can see, if you flip through it, it's just... Different stories, different art forms, um, different writers, and they all are just stories about Diana. And I've heard that this is really one of the most excellent things uh, concerning Wonder Woman going on at the moment. Really true to who Diana is as you know a person, and so with you know her appearing in the Batman vs Super Superman movie that I am not at all excited to see. I am hoping to be able to get my my Wonder Woman fix through this. And then a book that I was a complete cover by, uh, honestly. I'm just honestly. It is published by Image. It's called Wolf. See, it's just this really bright hot pink, which I don't think is coming through very well. It looks more red, but it's a hot pink. And this is Volume 1, Blood and Magic. I don't know the creative team that way at all. I know Lee Lou Ridge, the colorist, because he colors several comics I read, but other than that, the team is entirely new to me. Uh, this is about Antoine Wolf, a hard-boiled paranormal detective with a death wish, and he has to cope with sudden responsibility for an orphan teenage girl who might be the key to the impending apocalypse, California style. Also featured, a bag full of cash, a serial killer on the loose, and many secrets. So the blurb sounds really interesting. Um, I haven't really found a lot of noir comics that I enjoy, so I'm, I'm hoping to give this a high rating. Here's an example of some of the artwork. It looks pretty straightforward. But yeah, wolf. And then since I've, I've already talked about the Tamakis once and promised a reappearance, I picked up Skim. This is a graphic novel by uh, Mariko and Julian Tamaki. Um, Y'all, it's won all of these awards. I love the Tamaki cousins. I love everything they do individually or together. Uh, I think this is about kind of this teenage girl nicknamed Skim. Uh, she's a goth, I think, and it says on the back, suicide, depression, love, sexuality, crushes, clicks of popular, manipulative peers. The whole gamut of teen life is explored in this literary graphic masterpiece. So I'm going to love it because... I've yet to be disappointed by anything that they've done. So you can see the Tamaki art. No, it's glorious. Fully black and white. Can't wait to read this. We'll read the Tamakis. Anything they write, including Tomb Raider. Because they're great. And then finally, a book that I showed in my underhyped uh, readathon TBR. This is Love the Tiger by Frederic Bermond. Hope I'm saying it even close to right. This is a wordless graphic novel, the first in sort of a series of similar types of stories where we follow the day in the life of, a, of an animal. And so this one obviously follows this tiger here. And I've heard fantastic things. On the back it says jungle. The word is derived from ancient Sanskrit evoking a space that is brutal, claustrophobic, and unforgiving, a space of challenges and nightmares, a foreboding hell filled with beasts of all kinds, but a hell disguised as a lush paradise. The first in a series of books, each focusing on a different day in the life of a different wild animal, 
across different natural habitats. Love the Tiger received the Special Jury Selection Award at the Festival of Commons in uh, Luca, Italy, 2011. This is published by Net Magnetic Press, which I'm hearing good things about. The second is Love the Fox. So I'm hoping to collect all of them and read them and then want them. Show you some of the art. This beautiful in paper art. And then this is what the inside art looks like. Really, really beautifully drawn, very realistic depictions. So, yeah. Uh, I will be reading this very, very soon. So, those are all the comics I got in and around my birthday. And I will see you guys next time.